This is the United States Croquet Association AC National Championships held April 2021 at the Sarasota County Croquet Club in Venice, Florida. Your tournament director is Jeff Sue, ably assisted by his wife Eileen. And the tournament manager is Hans Peterson, president of the local club. This is the championship match. Jeff Sue got to the final by beating Tom Balding in the semis. Stephen Morgan dispatched Matthew Essek two games out of three. Stephen Morgan has a number of national championships, five in singles and four in doubles in all three disciplines. Jeff Sue in 25 years has amassed an amazing record with, by my count, eight singles national championships and 11 doubles championships, as well as countless appearances in Mick Robertson Shield and Solomon Cup events. At the end of this tournament, Jeff was ranked fifth in the U.S. and 34th in the world, and Stephen was sixth in the U.S. and 42nd in the world. At the beginning of this upcoming second game, they had played 10 times in AC, and Jeff was leading 6-4. to four. Steven prevailed 26 to 3 in game 1 and I only have the last four ball break of that game so I elected not to put it up. This is game 2. Jeff opened with blue on the east boundary. Steven responded with red just out of corner 2. Jeff shot at blue with black and Steven in turn 4 is now shooting yellow from Bebog trying to make a double out of those two balls on the east boundary. Probably leaving partner near the boundary so he can come back to it after setting a lead. Getting going off that corner two ball is going to be challenging. Ooh, speaking of challenging, that blue ball out there now could either be an opportunity or a problem. So you're actually in somewhat of a precarious position. Yeah. That's why a lot of people don't like putting on the ball. I mean, they can go to the I do. And they get a couple of books for it. I bet they can bang and bang one and one. Yeah. Or show me what you got. Mm -hmm. Pretty good result after all. On this court, yeah, it wasn't good then. Yeah, like a nice website, Jeff, and now he's trying to go to Coach Moose Corner. Well, there's a website called Coquet Scores that um, will. Has landed a little bit short with an angle. This is going to be a tough one. Yeah. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, considering it, not fully committed. Really 
He's lucky that ball went so far afield after that miss. Some people don't do that. I don't know. It's like a dugout baseball. Yeah, it's right. Well, it kind of is. I mean, you're waiting to go up to bat. Like, you're going to just sit there and chit chat. Steven has the innings. Jeff could do some sort of wide join, but in easy conditions, these guys are going to get going no matter what. So with critical distances over 13 yards, they're going to shoot a lot. He was obviously wired from red. So in turn seven, we get going. Oh, I thought he was going to try to rush Red over the well, he Isn't he didn't get a rollout on that boundary? No, I mean, plays off it. Having brought both balls over, he can now put a ball at one, he has a ball at three, and he'll have a rush to hoop two if he doesn't make it now.
Second game over. Yeah, that's all. Some reason I thought he ran the hoop and had black at the same time. No, no, no. He was trying to play. He does get to run the I think he's rushing red all the way over here because yellow is hoop three pioneer is so far east of the hoop. Typical pivot position for red now would be out in the middle in the one third plus one yard position John Ritchie's likes to talk about. But he's putting red over by hoop six. It's somewhat analogous to the way you can load two back before you make five. He'd rather have an opponent ball as the pioneer at six, and Liss lets him place that yellow ball as the hoop six pioneer very precisely, just as it does when you're treating two back the same way. This is especially useful in setting up a sextuple because that hoop six pioneer is so critical to getting the opponent ball back and wired at hoop one.
So what precipitated the switch in Alex? Um, Double loading five for more control of rushes and pioneer placement at two back. I assume that's the standard, right? <laughs> The 
the first try for positioning the peg ball in the diagonal spread. A lot of calculating the best spot for wiring from 
the end of ABOC as well as the PEG. both his balls are on one this doesn't really force him to play either one people usually do what he's doing and I think it doesn't make any difference the triple is going to be delayed anyway because it puts the P. Lee as the pioneer at hoop two I don't have any way to calculate successful triple percentage, but in 25 years on the ranking website, Jeff has done 295 triples just in singles. A bunch of uh, TPOs and OTPs. I don't think he's ever done a sextuple in competition. This one will, of course, be delayed unless he can pick up yellow out of corner four after one or two. In uh, Beyond Expert Croquet, Patty Chapman talks about setting up the reverse rush out of two to go pick up 
that corner four ball and get the triple back on time, but the hoop three pioneer needs to be quite a bit further south for that to be any easier than a Hogan roll would have been. But it looks like Jeff's going to send the P. Lee to four in standard delayed triple technique. If he had a Pioneer at four, he would probably take the P. Lee to four back now. Here comes a maneuver you can't do in American rule. Because in American rules, that's not a real K. If black goes out, your turn is over, not to mention the 15 yard shot you left yourself if you stayed in bounds. Setting up a hoop five pioneer. And now deciding where to put yellow to facilitate getting the P. Lee and an escape ball to four back. Playing for the reverse rush. Back down to four back after four. Should be easy to get to six from there after the peel.
We got the all important rush out of five. But I think he needs a little more room to get done what he wants here. I think he just wanted a better rush toward four back on the P. Lee. No. Prioritizing the break over the peels. I don't think he's abandoned the triple yet. But he can't afford to break down and give Steven all the balls. Putting blue where he could rush it back over to four back after six. was probably hoping for a better rush toward corner three so we could send yellow to two back and still think about getting the triple by rushing blue to four back and making one back off of red. He could still do that from there, though. Let's see, stop shot, peel from there, make one back off of red. Probably not. Time to abandon the triple. He could still set up a straight triple if he wants to. But a good leave is probably better.
I told Van they were six That's what I told them. We have one car. Straight triple or a peg and four back leave. He probably thinks it's a stupid question. Oh, yours.
Stephen won game one. Whether the spread should be standard or reverse orientation, I think depends more on what the second hoop is that you have to make rather than the initial one. So if he were for three, he'd be doing a reverse spread, but since he's for four back, the standard diagonal works just fine. Same as the first time around, but now Steven knows that if he doesn't hit, Jeff's going to finish, so he'll take the short shot.
Yes, you can do a good route. Jeff Sue evens the match. 
by winning game two in the AC Nationals final, 26 to nothing. Stay tuned for game three.